All right, y'all, welcome back to Common Arms Channel. So today's video, we're doing another little rendition of Amazon's cheapest versus military grade items. So stuff that I was actually issued in the military. Now we've seen with these videos previously that you can be pretty surprised by the, by the quality of stuff you can actually get for, for really cheap on Amazon. Um, so today's video, we're actually going over the tourniquets. So I've been in the, in the US Marine Corps Infantry and the US Army Infantry. But something that pretty much remains standard throughout the military, the, at least the U.S. military, is the, is the tourniquets. So that would be the, the combat application tourniquet or the, or the CAT. Now, you'll, again, you'll see these all over the place. There are a few other options, uh, you know, like the RAS or the soft T. And they're, you know, they work, um, but I mean, every, everyone will have one of these at some point. And that's just because they're proven, they're effective, they're durable. And um, yeah, I mean, they have a good track record. So I swear by these, uh, I, I have actually used one and I've even used it in a scenario that you wouldn't really expect me to, to have to use it in, but I'll go over that later on as a little, as a little story time. Um, but yeah, on Amazon, they have a bunch of different tourniquets you can actually look at and they have some really cheap ones. Some that are, that are like $4, $5, but those are usually ones coming from China and um, yeah, I, I've tried purchasing products from China that were really cheap, but they just, they don't end up getting to me. They just either get lost or I mean, they might not even get shipped at all. So for these videos, I'm going to pretty much stick to stuff that's, that's prime worthy. So Amazon prime. And um, I was able to find a $10 tourniquet and uh, here it is. I decided to get blue just because I kind of wanted to just change it up. The, the cat tourniquet comes in blue black and orange. Um, they're all pretty much the same. They do the same thing. They're just meant to be used for different things, but they all have the same effectiveness. Um, so yeah, I decided to get a blue one. Now we'll do a little close up of, of these side by side and I'll go over everything as far as the effectiveness, the quality of materials and whatnot. And uh, yeah, we'll see, we'll see how this stacks up versus, you know, what we're actually issued in the U S military. So should be very interesting. So let's get into it. Okay, so right off the bat, uh, we'll go over the pricing. So this tourniquet I was able to purchase for $10 off of Amazon. And then the cat tourniquets, um, you can usually get them for about $30, $35. Now that's not a huge difference. However, for something like a tourniquet, a lot of people will just, you know, uh, it, it's something that you don't really intend to use or you hope you, you never use. So they, they might go the cheap route just because it is that contingency item, so to speak. Um, now I would disagree with that mentality, but that, you know, that is a, a, a reasoning to, to go behind going something cheaper as opposed to the actual cat tourniquet. So here we have the cat. You can see it's got, um, you know, a little, little leaflet. It's got instructions and whatnot. It's got a little bit of information about it. And, uh, overall it's, it's pretty simple. Um, yeah, you can see on the, the cat itself, it's got the lot number and everything. It's, it shows the cats and, um, I'm not sure if it says it says in a different area, but they usually have like an expiration date on these, uh, on these cats. So we'll have to look at that later on, but yeah, a lot of people will end up using these, um, past their expiration, but it's just something to consider. They do usually have an expiration date. So that's pretty basic. And then here we have the $10 tourniquet. So, um, yeah, it doesn't really say much. Yeah. I imagine it is a Chinese brand that's making these cause it's so cheap. So, uh, I, IO scene is what it looks like. Um, but yeah, I mean, not too bad. It's got a little rip perforation. So yeah, nothing, nothing crazy with the packaging. I mean, it, 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 it is what it is. It's packaging. So let's open them up. Okay. So we have this first tourniquet. So let's look at these instructions. Okay, so it is in English, so that's nice. So, uh, effective for controlling life-threatening extremity bleeding. Okay, so at least it does make the distinction for what you actually use a tourniquet for. Um, a lot of people would, would think a tourniquet is just for, you know, a lot of, uh, if someone's bleeding, if they have like a severe cut. Um, but really what a tourniquet for is, is like massive hemorrhaging. Um, you know, if someone has a severed artery or punctured artery, and they have arterial, arterial bleeding or they're bleeding out, that's when you want to apply a tourniquet. And it is usually for the extremities. Um, I've never seen one try, anyone try and use a tourniquet for anything else, luckily. But 
Um, yeah, a lot of people might get that twisted if they're not necessarily familiar with the idea of a tourniquet. But yeah, some pretty solid illustrations and the, uh, the English is actually pretty decent. So you can actually uh, comprehend what it's trying to say on the back. So you, I guess we, we can see it comes in a bunch of different colors as well. So that's it's nice to have different color options because you know if you want to utilize your black because it's a little more tactical you have that option orange you can utilize that for maybe um, you know rescue units or just training blue for the same thing and then you know you, you have the option for gray so they do have one more color option than the cat tourniquet and that would be the, the gray so that's pretty interesting and yeah just pretty cheesy but yeah not bad as far as the, the whole packaging so let's open up this cat tourniquet let's look at these instructions so you can see they have the red tip and that's just um, a little bit easier to identify where the end of the tourniquet is so that's kind of nice okay so i do like how they teach you how to store it so that's another thing to consider if we look at the cat tourniquet, it's, it's it's configured a certain way. So you can see the uh, the Velcro, um, the, I guess this Velcro tab isn't um, you know pulled across. You can see the windlass is uh, inside the the actual buckle parts, and on this tourniquet, that's not the case. Um, and I'll go over why that's important later on. But let's look at these instructions again. So yeah, you can see it's pretty pretty basic. It's just showing you how to um, you quick launch configuration. And a lot of people will uh, disagree with that for certain applications, but generally that's an awesome way to set up the tourniquet itself. So yeah, some legal stuff. And then we have some illustrations. Um, so it goes over two-handed application and one-handed application, which is really solid. Um, and yeah, just goes over the instructions for actually using it, so pretty solid uh, both of these have some pretty solid illustrations and instructions so let me talk about why it's important to to set the tourniquet up like this as opposed to this so if you want to utilize the tourniquet really quickly um, you know maybe for for self-aid uh, the tourniquet is set up like this for a reason so we just pull it apart you can see it's already looped so all you need to do is put this over your extremity undo this velcro and then pull it tight, you know, wrap it back around, and immediately you can grab this windlass and start twisting. So you don't have to undo the tab, you don't have to do anything crazy. It's pretty much set up. Um, it's made very easy for you know putting on an extremity or even doing um, self aid with a tourniquet. Now with this one, so let's say we needed to use it really quickly, we have to unfold it completely undo this Velcro and you can see it's it's got a very small loop. So you're not gonna fit that on most extremities. So you're gonna have to give it some slack. Okay, so that's uh, about enough. You put it on the extremity, wrap it around, but then you can see the tab is over. So now, uh, you know, you're doing this all under high stress and while someone's, you know, potentially bleeding out. So you're gonna have to undo this tab to actually start spinning the windlass itself. So it's just another step. Generally, when you're when you're setting it up, you just want to keep that out of the way and just throw the windlass in between the, uh, I guess what we'll call this the buckle, or the, uh, we'll just call it the hook, and we'll call this the buckle. So, okay, not bad. Now let's look at the actual composition of the tourniquets themselves. So you can see this one has a buckle. It's got some teeth to actually hold it in place a little bit better. Now you can see the windlass itself is sort of mirrored after the old cat tourniquets. So it's a little bit thinner, um, which is not too big of an issue, but when it's a little bit thinner, it is more prone to breaking. We can see we have this, this plastic piece right here, pretty thin, pretty flexible. We have the, the Velcro hook itself, and then we have the, um, the time tab that you'd actually throw over and put the time on so you, you know whenever you actually apply the tourniquets because you never want to have a tourniquet on for too long. And then again, we do have that, that red tip, which is always nice for identification and whatnot. And the Velcro itself, you know, it sticks pretty well. So, okay, so that's pretty nice. Now let's move to the cat tourniquets. Now this is the Gen 7. So with the Gen 7, you only have this one um, 
like loop in the buckle with the older tourniquets you would have two so you'd have to uh, feed it through and then feed it back through um, well you didn't really have to but yeah th that was something that you were recommended to do but with the new tourniquets you don't have to you can see with the windlass it's a lot beefier it's got uh, you know some more defined uh, grooves so with this one when your hands are sweaty or bloody it might be a little bit hard to actually spin it you can see this one, it definitely has a, a better grip, it's thicker, and uh, it's gonna be less prone to breaking. So let's look at that buckle. So you can see they have, they both have teeth. Um, these are a little bit smaller. Um, I, I would prefer it like this just because, you know, these might not uh, hold up too well, just because they're, they're pretty small. These are a little bit wider, so, um, that, I mean, that might be preference, not really too big of a deal. But again, let's look at that plastic underpiece. Pretty much the same, it's a little bit more rigid, but uh, pretty much what we were seeing on this side. Uh, we got the branding, we have the hook itself, and then we have the time tab, which is a uh, nice gray. And that's how you can identify a Gen 7 cat, is usually by the gray tab is the easiest way. And then, yeah, Velcro is pretty solid as well. And then again, moving down to that red tip. So, yep, there you go, there's that. We'll go along it. So you can see it um, looks very similar as far as material quality. The width is about the same. Thickness is about, you know, about the same. The Velcro even looks looks very, very similar. You know, they stick to each other very well. So, you know, it's, it's basically a clone of the cat. And I think it's doing a pretty good job so far of, of mirroring that. Let's look at the, the hardware parts. So if we see underneath, again, that's pretty much the same. You can see this plastic doesn't look as dense as it is on the cat. So that's the flex on the cat, really not too bad. Flex on this one isn't too bad either, but I'm questioning the density of the actual plastic itself. You can see even on the windlass, it looks a little bit cheap. Um, yeah, so. I guess we'll have to, to see how effective that is. The feeding through the windlass looks pretty much identical. Nothing too crazy there. And then moving to the, the buckle part. So this has some ridges here, which is interesting. Um, so we'll see how that actually plays a part with the actual application. But as far as the length, let's pull these next to each other. And yeah, they are pretty much the exact same length, if not the exact same length. So, all right, nothing crazy so far as far as the uh, the uh, composition and whatnot. It's pretty impressive clone so far. So I guess next we would have to test the, the Velcro strength. So it's not too positive. You can see it's, uh, I mean, it's it's almost wanting to, to come apart. Nothing too too strong there. Let's check the actual cat tourniquet. So, so that's pretty much the same. So again, I think the Velcro uh, or whatever you want to call it, hook and loop, yeah, that, that's basically the same. So I want to see how tight we can actually get this. So I'm going to grab my foam roller and we're actually going to uh, apply these tourniquets onto the foam roller. See if we can get, um, you know, maybe any flexing in the windlass or, or uh, yeah, I guess we'll see how they actually apply. So Let's grab that. Okay, so here we have our extremity. So we're gonna start off with the cheaper tourniquets. So again, we'll put this around, get it through the buckle, get it nice tight before we actually start twisting. Okay, and then let's get the windlass going. So, again, with the tourniquets, um, it, it's not going to be comfortable when you're putting a tourniquet on. And you can imagine just by like one twist of the uh, the windlass, you're already feeling that. As long as the the buckle itself or the the strap itself was pretty tight. So, you can see here we're getting a lot of flex in in this part, which is a bit concerning. You can see it's almost twisting with the windlass. So it's sort of getting sucked up underneath. So let's stop it right here. 
because that's pretty tight. But we can see with this part, uh, yeah, it's twisting a lot. It's kind of coming underneath itself, which I've never seen happen with the CADs. Um, I wasn't necessarily looking for, for that, but yeah, I don't know if I would trust that just because, um, yeah, if that part fails, this tourniquet might not be the, the best idea, but yeah, so that's what we're, we're seeing so far. Um, yeah, you can see it's doing a pretty good job on the foam roller. We would just throw our tab over to help secure the windlass and then put the time on there. But um, yeah, okay. I mean, it, it is working. I would definitely expect it to work if I can get it that tight with an actual extremity, you'd probably get a little bit tighter. Um, you'd get as tight as possible, pretty much um, as, as tight as you can. The windlass should be fine. But um, I don't know about this part. The windlass seems to be holding up. It wasn't really flexing too much, but this part is a kind of a concern. So let's, let's get the other cat and see how that compares. So with a tourniquet, you generally don't want to use them over and over again unless it's just training. But yeah, you can see that's pretty much permanently warped to the point of having like um, almost creases in the plastic. And they could have been there before, but yeah, that, that plastic is pretty much permanently warped. Uh, which is a little interesting. I've used cats multiple times uh, as far as, you know, just training and whatnot over and over again because you would generally have a, a training tourniquet that you would utilize. So you can see here I have a training one. I just have an X on it. And um, yeah, I mean, it, it's never been an issue. You can see with this buckle, it's it's okay. But yeah, let's, let's throw this one on and see how it actually uh, compares. pretty solid all right now let's start twisting so what we can see here is it's pulling the the material through the buckle but it's not necessarily twisting the buckle too much. You can see it's not overlapping over itself like the other one was. It's, it's holding up pretty well. It's getting bowed out, but um, I think it did a better job of feeding the, the strap actually through itself. So the windlass, again, no issue there. Throw our time tab over and have it secured. So, I mean, overall, yeah, I mean, it, for some reason, this one felt a little bit easier to twist. And uh, I'm not sure if, if that's really an issue or if that makes a difference. But yeah, it, it might've just been because the windlass is a little bit thicker and I had a little bit better grip on it itself, but it definitely pulled the strap straighter. You can see it's not twisting it too much. So, I mean, pulling the strap, the strap straighter seems like it would apply tension a little bit better, uh, at least even tension, you know, cause if the tourniquet twists a lot, you might have tension spe specifically on one side and if it's doing that, then you're going to get some pretty bad tissue damage. Now, it is a, an extremity injury that's probably uh, really bad, but you don't want to mess with the tissue that's actually good. And, you know, generally these will go on good tissue because it'll go above the wound and whatnot. But, um, yeah, you don't want to mess up that tissue. So these cats do a very good job of maintaining a very solid pressure, but not necessarily one area where you're, you know, cutting into the flesh because... You do want to get it extremely tight, but you don't want to completely mangle the tissue itself. So yeah, that's very interesting to see. We'll take it off. We'll take a look at that buckle part. Poor foam roller. All right, it'll, it'll buff. So let's look at that buckle. So you can see, yeah, it's, it's still doing pretty well. It's, it's not really messed its shape up much. Yeah, so let's take out the other tourniquet. And just from, from one use, you can see this one was having a much harder time with actually getting back uh, into shape. Now, they both seem okay, but again, I, I would be concerned about the, the pressure as far as on, on one side. Uh, it looks like the strap might be a little bit wider than the, the cat itself. 
so maybe it might start pushing to one side but um yeah that's the only issue that that might be concerning but other than that i mean it performed pretty well and you can see again even with the molding it's a, almost a carbon copy so um for something ten dollars as far as like being a copy of the of the cat tourniquet it definitely does a, a good job so we'll close out this video and i'll give my uh, my final remarks and also give you that uh, that story time that I promised you guys. Okay, so I mean, for a ten dollar tourniquet, I think it does a pretty solid job. Again, it is going to be effective. A tourniquet is some, it's you know simple mechanics, um, but however, the product itself could fail if one of the uh, one of the parts or one of the components has a weak spot. So I was a little bit sketched out with that buckle, but I think you know if you're not applying it too much, if it is just a one time application. It should be okay, um, even for staying on for a few hours, which is generally how long you want to keep it on, um, or you know the longest you want to keep it on. I think it does a pretty good job. And again, we we saw the length was the same. We looked at the build quality itself; it was pretty solid. Again, it's more of a clone of the older generation cat tourniquets, but even still, it it is pretty solid. The windlass was holding up; it wasn't flexing too bad. It was getting that tension. And uh, even the, the time strap was, was securing pretty well. So yeah, really, really no crazy issues with this. Honestly, it's a pretty solid clone. But you know, even for, for people who aren't necessarily interested in, in having the best, you know, if you're going hiking, if you're doing something recreational, you just want to have a tourniquet around or two, this would be a pretty solid option, honestly. Um, now for those, for those first responders or, or people who are more serious about first aid and being able to stop bleeding, um, you know, if they don't necessarily don't have the resources to get help, you know, they might want to get the, the cat. Now for me, I don't know, maybe you can call me bougie, but I like to stick with the, with the OG, with the original. And that's just because, you know, the company, the company did it right. So that, that's why they have the, the fame, the notoriety that they actually do. Um, they built their own reputation from the ground up. So I can appreciate that. And I mean, even if it is just, you know, supporting a company, that's something that I'm interested in too, but yeah, I, I just prefer to stick with the original. And again, I've used this on someone. I haven't really used a, a cheap one on someone. So that's pretty much what I can say. Again, a very viable option. So as far as story time, okay, so I think this, this story took place about a year and a half ago. Um, I was over in Louisiana, so I was stationed at Fort Polk at the time, and uh, I was chilling in my back porch with my lab. I'd say it was maybe, it was like late, spring or early summer so i was chilling in the back porch with my with my lab and my neighbor she's like a maybe 16 17 year 70 years old she was actually driving like a, a go go kart or like a kind of like a polaris but not as heavy duty she was driving that around this field that we had behind our houses uh, and she actually had her sister in the in the car at the time as well or the atv we'll just call it an atv so they were driving it around all of a sudden i i stopped hearing the noise i stopped hearing the engine and then I, saw, I started hearing a screaming, and it was kind of like one of those screams that makes you a little bit uncomfortable. You're like, okay, that's not really a fun scream anymore. So I went and looked, and I saw it was on its side. So I figured, you know, maybe they just got spooked. They knocked it on its side, um, and they're just freaked out. So I was like, okay, I'm barefoot, but I'll just go run over and, and help, help pick it up because it probably wouldn't be too heavy. So I go run over, and by the time I'm getting around it to actually see what's going on, uh, I'm looking, and... I guess when, when it was falling on its side, um, the 16 year old, I guess her daughter or the, her sister had left the, the younger sister. She had gotten out at some points, but the, the 16 year old put her arm out as it was turning over. And basically from like all of this was just, it was just tissue. It, all, this had basically blown open because when she hit the ground, um, yeah, basically all of this went that way. So it was, wasn't really hanging on with anything. It, it had like a couple of veins um, connecting her hand to the rest of her arm. And uh, yeah, I was basically like, okay. And what I told her exactly was, I was like, stay right there. I'll be right back. And then as I was running, I was like, I actually did a little smirk. I was like, why did I say that? Like, she's probably not going to move from where she's at. So I ran. I was actually yelling up to my wife, who's on the second floor, to, to call 911. Cause you just want to, you want to get those coming as soon as possible. And I knew exactly where my, where my cat tourniquet was, um, because I have a few around my house just cause I'm kind of paranoid, but I knew exactly where one was. So I ran and I grabbed it 
and I ran back because you can imagine when all this is, is wide open and there's just a few veins left and tendons, uh, there's gonna be a lot of blood. So that was my priority was just stopping the blood, make sure she wasn't bleeding out. So I ran back um, while she was still on the go-kart. I didn't wanna move her or anything. Uh, I threw one of these on her. I was like, hey, this is gonna hurt, but uh, I need to stop the bleeding. And her, her main focus, she was kind of like shocked at the time. She was, you know, asking me if she was going to die and whatnot. I'm like, it's like, no, 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 you'll be fine. I got, I got one of these now. You'll be, you'll be good. You're not going to bleed out at least. So I put it on her. Um, I checked her pulse, which is kind of silly because um, I don't know if there was really even a pulse that was going from her elbow to her hand. Because again, there wasn't really too much in between. But I checked her pulse just to make sure that she didn't have blood flow coming over, over here. And she didn't. So that was good. So the tourniquet was, uh, it was effective. Uh, but yeah, long story short, uh, we ended up getting the paramedics there. We, we helped her out. I guess um, another neighbor ended up coming out at this point. And then her father ended up coming out like five minutes later. But uh, yeah, we helped her out of the go-karts. Um, and then while, as we were moving her from the, from the ground to the, to the gurney or the stretcher, uh, I, I was kind of holding her hand and her elbow, trying to keep, it, keep them aligned. Because if you wouldn't, then her hand would just go like this. Because again, there was just like a, a couple of tendons left. Uh, so yeah, I was kind of just like holding that arm as they were moving the rest of her onto the stretcher. And uh, yeah, I mean, she was fine. She, she lived, so that's good. The, the cat definitely did its job. Again, it was a scenario that you wouldn't really expect to be taking one of these out. It's never a, a fun time when you're, when you're not. I mean, it's, it's not a fun time when you're in combat and you're using one of these. But, you know, when you're back in the States, it's really not a fun time, especially doing it on like a, a 16 year old girl. But yeah, it, it was definitely effective. It worked. And um, yeah, I can't really say if it saved her life or not. But yeah, I was glad I had one of these. Um, I, I'm glad I had multiple of these. So yeah, just something to consider. Um, again, when you're when you're trying to buy something that that is a life saving tool, potentially, uh, you know, it, it's best to not skimp on the quality. And a tourniquet is pretty simple. I mean, you can buy uh, this $30 tourniquet and, you know, never use it, which is, it is $30 that you're not really using. But again, it is a potentially life-saving tool. So things to consider. Um, again, it was a very solid clone. And um, yeah, I mean, if you're using this, most people are going to just assume that this is a, an actual cat itself. But yeah, pretty solid clone. Again, you can be pretty surprised by the cheap stuff you can actually find on Amazon. But yeah, I mean, I, I can't really say anything too bad about this. Again, it does serve service purposes. I would still prefer the OG, but yeah, that is what it is. So if you guys like the video, definitely feel free to hit that thumbs up. Comment and let me know what you, what you think about this, this cat clone and what you actually use for your tourniquets and if you have any crazy tourniquet stories yourselves. But definitely throw those in the comment section. If you're not subscribed, I would definitely appreciate y'all subscribing. It does help support the channel. And it, it gives us a bigger community to, uh, to rock and roll with. But that is it for this video. So I will see you all in the next one.